are no remains of dinosaurs in amber, surely their DNA is beyond our reach. The Poinars dared to wonder if that was so. The story begins 20 years ago, when Roberta first focused an electron microscope on an amber animal. Inside a fungus gnat, like the one in my piece of botic amber, she discovered something quite amazing. It's like a miracle. Every once in a while in your life you witness something that's just too spectacular for words. And this was one of the times. The Poinars had found 40 million year old cells, and more than that, even the minute structures inside the cells were clear to see. The prospect of finding such ancient DNA electrified the scientific community. And Hollywood wasn't far behind. The storyline of Jurassic Park is very ingenious. My brother, who played the scientist, didn't actually need to find bits of dinosaur in amber. Nature had already extracted their DNA in blood cells and preserved it inside an amber mosquito. But that's pure fiction, isn't it? Surely it's impossible to recover DNA from any animal which lived in the distant past. Well, two teams set out to attempt exactly that. One of them included David Grimaldi. The other was set up by the Poinars. Both knew that their only chance of finding DNA was in the best preserved animals, so the Poinars chose to use my favorites, some stingless bees, while the other team decided to work on an amber termite. We had no expectations, at least I didn't, um, when we did the study. Uh, we did the extractions, we tried it, um, several of the extractions were unsuccessful. But then both teams struck gold. Tissue extracted from the Poinars bees tested positive for DNA. And David Grimaldi got the same result from the termite. And our first reaction, particularly mine, was really disbelief. I was astounded at the possibility of DNA being preserved. It really was astounding. They were claiming to have recovered DNA from animals which had died 20 million years before. Not yet as old as the dinosaurs, but that's what a new team, including the Poinars, turned to next. And when they said what they had found, they caught the attention of the world. They had DNA from an insect older than T. rex. Could Hollywood possibly have got it right? We felt that the bringing back an entire dinosaur was not in the realm of possibility at this time. Barraged with the common question, when are you going to clone extinct organisms? And we constantly had to repeat ourselves, we're not going to do that. Um, but why not? DNA is indeed preserved in amber. It is so chopped up, so fragmentary, that it's impossible to reconstruct the entire genome and then insert it into some surrogate organism and then you know, have, have a complete resurrected extinct species out of that. That's, that's absolutely impossible. As the blaze of publicity surrounding the film faded, so other scientists tried to extract DNA from amber insects. And their results, when they were published, were bad news for the Poinars and David Grimaldi. None of them had found even a trace of ancient DNA. But what went wrong? What some of them found, in fact, were contaminant DNA sequences. And I have to admit, by that point, I was pretty much convinced that the original reports of DNA sequences in amber were of contaminant DNA. And some of the scientists that did t make an attempt got all kinds of strange things. They would get uh, uh, fish DNA. Well, perhaps they had a tuna fish sandwich that day and were, were careless. Like most other researchers, David Grimaldi has changed his mind. 
But George Poinar is still confident that a few rare pieces of amber do contain DNA. And some insects certainly could have drunk the blood of dinosaurs. These sandflies have been preserved in amber for a hundred million years. Who knows what might be inside them? And that is why amber fascinates me so much. It has brought us so many surprises. The prospect of it preserving DNA brought dinosaurs back, at least in our imaginations. And the creatures that travelled in it through time bring us vivid snapshots of the Caribbean forest as it was 20 million years ago. And my piece of Baltic amber, the first I ever owned, has preserved creatures with such perfection that they are still startlingly beautiful. What a journey Amber has taken me on. And it all came from a gift from a small girl over 60 years ago. I imagine Marianne and her father found my piece of amber by walking along a Baltic shore just as thousands of people had done before them. Its magic may not extend to recreating a dinosaur, but for me amber remains a substance of wonder, a time machine that can show us exactly how some things look tens of millions of years ago.